I think I would, I would like to thank uh, Molita sir for the kind invitations to talk on apicardial echocardiography. Of course, this is this topic is out of the track. What we are talking about to TE nowadays. Apicardial echocardiography has been uh, nicely accepted by uh, cardiologists, anesthesiologists, surgeons nowadays, and its applications during the cardiac surgery has been well accepted. Uh, nowadays. What we talk about epicardial echocardiography is in the practice before the decade of introduction of transesophageal echocardiography. So this is not a new modality at all. Till then, why do we use still epicardial echocardiography if we have the TA with us? Because reasons are there are the probability of chances of uh, potential injuries like patient having esophageal varices or the oropharyngeal pathologies. All patients can have the problems with the manipulations of the probe. There are the, some uh, structures of the anterior heart, like the pulmonary arteries or the heart of the aorta, which is not easily visual, visible by the transesophageal echocardiography. And the introduction is difficult while patient is in the drip or during the anesthesia and after coming or bypass if you want to evaluate the heart. So many of the times it happens that the, the age and the weight is not compatible with the T probe available. So we can't put the T probe, the adult T probe in the adult populations. Along with that, with that epicardial echocardiography, we can have with a higher frequency probe because we are just directly putting on the heart. So we can have the higher frequency probe and we can have the base optimal resolutions with that. And the anterior structures like aorta, aortic wall, pulmonary valves, and arteries can be nicely seen if you do the epicardial echocardiography. And without any extra cost, and of course, there is no minimum age and the way, uh, and the way which is restricted because we are doing directly with the heart. Now, most of the times, the epicardial echocardiography has used as a complementation to the transesophageal echocardiography rather than replacements. And there are good articles, particularly in the pediatric populations, which have shown that in the pulmonary arteries, aortic arch, left superior vena, vena cava, or collateral pulmonary vessels, and the bin surgery performed into the cava, for the cava pulmonary anastomosis, Ross procedure, arterial switch, where we want to evaluate more anterior structures, it will be a very good boom or the help to the transesophageal echocardiographies. And there are many articles as published that even the residual insurance can be evaluated well with the epicardial echocardiographies. But there are the limitations that since we are, uh, we are doing these structures with the sternotomies, we have to do the patient, it's, it's become an invasive one and does not permit the constitution, uh, continuous monitoring because we have to request surgeon to sit on the chair, uh, sit on the chair and relax while we are doing the epi echo. And there are the chances of cardiac arrhythmias because we are directly physically handling the heart and the sterility is very, very much concerned because we directly put the heart, uh, probe on the, uh, on the heart. We can have the pressures, uh, uh, unadvertently un high pressures on the heart and the possibility of the support surgery graft and the, uh, and the suture lines the, uh, can be a little disturbed. So we should be very careful while doing the epi echo. Now the training part, uh, just contrary to the transesophageal, we can't just keep on training to the colleagues because the, we have to hold the surgery. So uh, best way of getting the train is sit, sitting with the cardiologist colleague and understand the transthoracic echocardiography because all the images are very much like the transthoracic echocardiography. So better have understanding and training on the transthoracic first rather than jumping on the echocardiography. And at least guidelines say that at least 25 epigardal examinations with the supervisions and five at least independent echo observations is must. Now let's start with the echo images. The apical probe preparation is very important and we use high frequency probe because directly we are touching to the patient's heart. So we just put the, so we just put the, the jelly on the probe and then we just leave over the uh, probe uh, jelly so to make a more sterile. Uh, the probe we are using the, uh, the five onwards megahertz frequency. Then we have to enter the, uh, the, the sleeve in such a way that we don't leave behind any air bubbles entrapped into the, near the probe. And if required, we can put the saline into the perigrid field to let, let, let have the better propagations of the ultrasound signals. Now, there are like TE and transesophageal, there are some movements which has been accepted, like some one movement is superior angle movements where we are just angling the probe, the superior aspects to the, the shoulders or so the left or right. This is the angle which is called, called the inferior angle probe, where we are just putting the directing the probe towards the apex. Then it is the anti-clockwise rotations, and that is a, this is the clockwise rotations, and these are the uh, things which routinely we do it while accepting while taking up the images. Then we'll be moving towards the RV 
from the basal to the apex sides or we can move towards the LV and uh, apex. It is not very easy to go to the LV and apex because the problem lies in it, it goes into the plural, plural side. So mostly anterior structures can nicely be seen here. Now we have to set the depth setting and the depth transit focus because that is directly we are putting it on the heart. So we have to understand that depth, import, depth is very important thing for the near field. Now, JC, Journal of American Society of Echocardiography, has given the seven epicardial images with us, but it is, mandated, it is not mandatory to go all the seven, but we may need to go a little modification to the probe and that uh, uh, modification to the images, and that is very important. Here, very important thing is since we are in TE, we put the probe behind the heart. Here, we are putting the probe anterior to the heart, so all the images are going like what we see in the trans thoracic echocardiography. So, let's begin with the epicardial AV short axis view. So there are two AV views, one is short axis, one is long axis. So here we just put the probe on the anterior aspects, that is the aortic groove just above the annulus with the ultrasound beam directed towards the aortic wall in the short axis view. So here we got the light like what we get in the transverse of the short axis view. But here the coronary cusp uh, is at the right coronary cusp is at the top. So how we do it like this? We put it at the base, that is the base just above the aortic annulus, just above the aortic annulus, and then we just make it in the clockwise rotations. And once we do the clockwise rotations, we what we get is, is like the, the Mercedes Benz kind of signs, which what we know it. And this uh, this what we we uh, routinely look look at uh, on the echo machines. Here, what see the uh, top is the right coronary cusp, the below is the non coronary coronary cusp and the right side of the screen is aortic cusp. Now here along with that, we can have the, just we just move forward and you can see the anterior structures like right coronary artery which, is, which can be seen and here we can also see in the left coronary artery here. So this both structure can be easily seen by little movement of the probe inside. Now every these guideline images are one followed by the other. So this is what epicardial AV short axis view. We can have even trans thoracic probe with the 3D images and we can see the very nice structures of the pulmonary valve and the MP along with that. So from AV short axis view, we go to the AV long axis view. From the previous positions, we just go to the little probe parallel to the right side of the light surface of the aortic root with an orientation mark rotated toward the clockwise and left side. So mark in almost except one view, all the, all the places the marker of the probe goes to the left shoulder. So here what you go to the parallel to the aortic root surface and then from that you get the aortic wall long axis view. And this is the view, very important view, what we measure for the aorta, like in transesophageal, sorry, for the transesophageal view we have, we, uh, we have seen in the previous talk. So this view is very important for assessment of the aortic wall and it is sometimes important in understanding the atheromatous plaques, calcifications. So sometimes this view is very good view to evaluate this part. Now from these two aortic view, we go to the LV. LV has three views. Epi, uh, this is epicardial LV basal short axis view. And from the previous view, you just turn your, you just path go along with the right ventricle and then you get it, you just locate from at this process. So, so and from the previous positions, we just travel to the right ventricle side. So this is how we see the epicardial LV basal short axis view. So from the basal, we have gone to the right, uh, right ventricle. And from that, we are just turning the ankle again into the clockwise positions and in clockwise positions. The, so the, the angle, the point should go to the right side. And then what we are seeing, seeing the basal uh, LV basal short axis view. Here you are seeing that uh, upper part is anterior mitral leaflet, lower is posterior mitral leaflet, right side commissar is anterior structures and anterior commissars and left is a uh, posterior commissars. So from top to bottom, from right to left is A1, A2, A3, P1, P2, P3. And from here, you can even, you can modify it. Now here very nice LV view is seen here. And from basal short axis view, you just, instead of turning it, instead of turning to the left to see the LV axis, if you turn right, you will see a major part of the right ventricle. So even right ventricle can be seen just tilting the probe towards more towards the right ventricle side, and you can see the right ventricle short axis at the basal side. So this view is also very important view to, show, to see the tricuspid valve and the left parasternal, and that is like the left parasternal transthoracic orientations. From the basal view, we are going to the LV mid, uh, mid uh, short axis view. 
So from the previous view, we had just uh, inferior angled the probes, and what we are, we are seeing is the papillary muscle, mid papillary muscle view. So from previous view, we are just turning inferior angle. So this is how we are doing it, like we have done a little inferior, and you can see that two papillary muscle view, that is mid papillary muscles view. So the angulation is very important, and here you can see this, the right side is the anterior papillary muscles, left side is the posterior papillary muscles, and you can see the complete good geometries where you can see the wall motion anomalies and other problems, RU dysfunction, everything can be seen if you see the interventricular septum. So just by angulating at the left uh, inferior, you can see this, the mid papillary view. Now, from here, the, the, now this is only view where you are turning the anti-clockwise, where the angle, the angle is towards the patient's right shoulder. So from the previous view, you just in, angulate towards the, the, the left ventricle view, the ultrasound beam can be angled superiorly and rotated towards the patient's right. So previously we just uh, inferior angle, now instead of that inferior, we just go superior and just turn it to the anti-clockwise rotations where the angulations of the ultrasound beam is toward the patient's right side. And this is what it looks like exactly what we see in the uh, in the plex view of the thoracic echocardiography. So here we have just gone to the to the uh, right ventricle and just turned it anticlockwise to see the angle to the right shoulder. And then you can see this plex view. This is a very important view, and this view gives idea about the both mitral and aortic. And you can see the right ventricle outlet tract also at the top of the screen. And then you can see the RV dysfunction also as well. Here, here you can see the color of mitral regurgitations, and if you have the three-dimensional echocardiographies, at the same time you can have the very nice submitral apparatus also, like cord ruptures, clots, everything can be seen very well in this view. And uh, these views can be also good for the looking at the interventricular septums, and you can evaluate ventricular septal defects and LVOT, everything on this view. And this view is very important. Uh, now from here, so the from, from same place, we just turn ourselves more to the left ventricle side. So here in the previous view, we, you were seeing left ventricle, left atrium, and right ventricle. So we want to avoid right ventricle. So you just go over to the left ventricle side and just go do the clockwise rotations, and you can see the two chamber view. But what we do in our routine practice, instead of going more towards the right ventricle, we modified it this view to see the more towards the right ventricle side. So not, not going to the left ventricle, we are going more towards the right ventricle. And what we do in the by doing right ventricle and just angulating clockwise rotations, we are seeing the excellent the four chambers view. And this view is very important. Like here, we can see the very nice four chamber view where you can see the mitral, tricuspid, and even zoom, you can see the peri 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 uh, uh, perimembranous septums, interment interventricular septal ruptures, and everything can be seen very well. Now, from the left side, there are some good right-sided heart, and that is very easy as compared to what we see in the in the transesophageal echocardiography. In this, we just have to put directly probe under the RVOT so to look at the RVOT. We don't have to move go here and there. We just put our probe under the RVOT sides, and we can see the complete RVOT. So, what we do need to do is take the take the probe to the superior, put on the RVOT, do the clockwise rotations, and just superior angle. And then what we get, start getting the RVOT. So we start initially getting the right ventricle, right ventricle outlet tracts. And this view is very important to see the hypertrophic right RVOT and everything can be seen. Just increasing further angle superiorly, we increase the RVOT and looking some part of the pulmonary wall. Further angulating more, we can see the complete RA, RV and RVOT with the pulmonary valves. So this view can be evaluated and give us idea about complete RA, RV structures. And we can do even if you have the 3D probes with us, we can see very nice RVOT, uh, pulmonary uh, valves and uh, all. So complete pulmonary valves, Doppler analysis can be done very well on this view. And like particularly in post-congenital uh, heart surgeries where we are having a doubt about RVOT, pulmonary valve, PR and PS, everything can be relied very well in this view. Now this two view is again a very, impo a very important and easy view. One view means you put, the, you put the probe at the base of the RV and look upward. Second is put at the base of the RV. Uh, first you put at the apex of the RV and look up upward. Second probe you put at the base and look downwards. So these two view means put at the apex and go up, look upward, and go at the base and look downwards. So these views is giving completely understanding about the tricuspid and right ventricle basal part. So these two very nice, this very nice right ventricle short axis view where the three leaflets of the tricuspid valve can be seen here. 
and here we can see the anterior and posterior tricuspid leaflet cusp. Here you can see the inferior vena cava with the coronary sinus, and you can see the color flow, tricuspid regurgitations, and Doppler analysis can be done with this. Beyond that, we can even look at the RVOT outlet, uh, outlet also. If you want to see the 3D pulmonary valves, 3D aspect pulmonary valves, this is a very nice view where you can see the, all the three leaflets very well. So if you have any doubt about any particular structures of the pulmonary valve, can be picked up that whether this anterior or right posterior or left posterior valve has problems. So that can be even this is view very much useful for us when we use the monocusp AOD, mono, monocusp pulmonary valve uh, uh, formation. So this view is giving very good ideas. Now, apart from the trans thoracic, people have tried to use the trans esophageal echocardiography probe for the intraoperative uh, epicardial imaging. And this has, uh, has pr produced a couple of papers in publications. And epi, some people have, because what, what the advantage of this is the T probe is high frequency probe. And that can be useful very easily if you can see, use it intraoperative. Instead of putting it into the esophagus, we can put it on the uh, surface. And this is how we prepare it. Like first, first apply the jelly sleeve over the sleeve. The uh, uh, apply the sleeve over the probe. Then put a lot of jelly into the gloss and insert and put the probe into the uh, gloss. And then you prepare such kind of the format of the probe. Then you can utilize at a different, different locations. You can look at the LV apex and you can look at the base. You can look at the pulmonary areas also. But the problem is when you are handling the T-probe on the heart, you have to hold the pressures on the, on the edges of the probe because what will happen while the systolic and diastolic, what will happen when you do the transthoracic probe, the systolic, the heart, the heart goes away from the probe and diastolic goes near the probe. So many of the times, every phase, you start losing the images. So even due to the TE probe, then also the chances are there that you may lose the image in between. So you have to compress your hand a little bit to the uh, edge of the probe to get a better images. So this is how you can do it. And the saline is very important like because we need to have the saline, otherwise there won't be any uh, good uh, propagations of the ultrasound signals and uh, you may lose the image in between. These are the image what you see. You can see that the things is going up and down like it, like diastole, you lose this image and systole, you get images. This is a, yeah, this is a patient having the anterior tricuspid leaflet because this, the cardiologist must have tried to close the mitral uh, ventricle septal rupture post MI. They tried it with the device uh, for the devices and they have tear the anterior tricuspid leaflet. And this is the end result of the left ventricle. You can see the very well nicely flow across the septum. So for the septum, transesophageal and transthoracic epicardial echocardiography is very good because it's directly perpendicular to the images. Even for the mitral valve repair assessments, this, this is a view what we get in the four chamber and five chamber on the transesophageal echocardiography when we put the probe at the LV apex and you can evaluate this, uh, this thing in the post coming of bypass because many of the time after coming of bypass, they may not be probe and you cannot insert it probe. So in transesophageal, this is the way how what you are getting it. But to confess this, that this is a yesterday's patient. After using this, we found this is a mild MR. But when we do, did TE for these patients, we found that you know, there was eccentric jet going right up to the top of the LA. So then we realized that it is like when you are really want to uh, ruling out uh, mitral regurgitations, if it is possible, transesophageal echocardiography is the modality. But if you cannot do, then transthoracic echocardiography is not a bad idea. Trans, trans, uh, I mean, epicardial echocardiography is not a bad idea. This is a transthoracic, uh, this is trans, um, epicardial echocardiography with the T probe, with the three dimensions. And you can see this uh, complete submitral uh, structures of the uh, left ventricle. And also, you can see the mitral valve ring, which we then the, uh, repair. One more modalities has been tried at substernal epicardial echocardiography that was recommended in one of the study that they published it. What they use is they, just the last minute, they use the matronic cannula and they put it in substernal with a nine millimeter mediastinal drain that put it. And they, it, the, it was incorporated with a blind ended sterile 11 millimeter or 16 millimeter silicon sleeve. 
and what they shift the patient with the keeping the drainage tube inside the patients with the sleeve in place and they keep it in the ICU. If whenever they require, they can just put a transesophageal probe into this drainage tube and then they uh, look at the post-operative case, post-operative uh, problems and they have given some different views for that but <laughs> very honestly we have never tried and we are not opting to try this in our future because we are very adverse with the TE and epicardial that's it. So this is what images they have uh, given it. And this is just for our understanding and our idea that this can also be tried in future if we want. So to conclude, understanding of epi-echo is mandatory, which is useful in many difficult situations and practices much with the transthoracic echocardiography. So before jumping into the trans uh, epi-cardial echocardiography, transthoracic echo is very important. Interp interruptions during the procedure needs to be handled carefully. I mean, there has to be some assistance standing on the anesthesia side and monitoring while you are doing the epi-echo epi and communication with the surgeon is very important. Sterility has to be maintained and protocol should be followed because directly you are putting a probe on the heart, so sterility plays a very important role. Epi echo is not a replacement to T, but many times, like congenital cases, supplements the diagnosis accuracy. And no fixed view should be followed, but use of modified views as per required. And the biggest advantage of epicardial echo is wherever you are feeling the murmur or problems, you can directly put the echo there and you can evaluate it. In this presentation, I have not included pediatric populations because they have a lot of tachycardia and the images are a little blurred because you need to have a lot of patience to acquire those images. And the arrhythmias and graph should be taken very seriously. So when you are evaluating the epicardial echocardiography post cardiac surgery, you should be very careful when you are putting the epi and with the surgeon in the confidence standing nearby because you should know where the distal grafts have been put that you should not have mishandled this graft and all. So thank you very much for the kind, kind attentions.